Magomed Ankalaev versus Nikita Krylov. We got minus 325 on Magomed and plus 265 on the minor uh, Nikita Krylov. Let's start off with Nikita Krylov, who's coming off a decision victory against Johnny Walker. The first decision victory he's ever won in his career. The second time he's ever gone a full 15 minutes, which is absolutely crazy. Uh, but uh, he he brought out his his singlet. You know, we got Nikki Russell or Nikki Wrestler uh, that night against Johnny Walker, where he just wanted to stay away from the power of Walker, continuously get the fight to the ground, and did some really good work from on top. Unfortunately, couldn't get Johnny Walker out of there, but did a really good job in terms of securing positions and really sucking the energy out of Walker, uh, really diminishing the knockout power of Johnny Walker that night. And uh, Nikita Grilov did a really good job uh, just, just staying on top, landing some good work from on top, and staying active enough that the referee would not stand them up. So, you know, nice little... Uh, change up in uh, Nikita Krylov's game especially considering you know he's at 34 fights he's only 28 years old the guy's been around forever just finding the who's who you know he he had his original UFC stint that didn't go the greatest ended it off with uh, Misha Serkinov choking him out then he goes over to M1 I believe it is somewhere over there in Russia Fight Night Globals has a couple fights over there even fights Fabio Maldonado knocking him out and then comes back to the UFC and since then he's gone two and two the Glover to Sheriff fight was the one before Johnny Walker where, you know, back and forth grappling exchanges, very close submission attempts from either side. But we saw the grittiness of Glover to Sheriff really shine through in that fight. You know, I believe he notched two reversals in that fight, not to mention a couple of takedowns. I think that was really wearing on Nikita Krolov. And we saw, you know, the gas tank issues that Krolov definitely has. Uh, and, and Glover did a good job of just, you know, always pulling through, always ending up on top. And doing some good damage as well. The the Ovin St. Proof fight. That's where we saw the cardio on the other hand. Fill for uh, Nikar, uh, Nikita Krylov's opponent. You know what I mean? Uh, OSP did a good job of staying on top in that first round. Landing a takedown. Uh, you know, landing some good damage from on top. Going for a couple of submission attempts. But then come that second round. You saw OSP absolutely huffing and puffing. And he just was not ready to go for that second round. And Nikita Krylov took full advantage of that. Uh, I believe you. Uh, yeah, he sunk in the rear naked choke. Beautiful submission victory for him there um and yeah it, like it's great seeing that type of improvement from a fighter when it's talking about going up against a specific opponent right the first time he fought osp uh several years prior he got von prude and then he comes back and fights him again in his second uh second fight back with the with the ufc and he chokes him out in the second round now i do want to chalk that up to the cardio issues of one uh of insane proof but you got to give daps to nikita krolov for pulling off the fight the way that he did uh the fight before that jan blahovich that was his return fight to the ufc where we saw blahovich uh you know get taken down early reversed black belt himself too he gets uh on top of krilov and then does some good work from on top and then eventually in that second round getting that submission victory via arm triangle choke absolutely beautiful work from him there uh to get nikita krilov out of there now, how he matches up with a guy like Magomed Ankalaev, who mainly a striker, has some good wrestling chops as well too, has only been taken down twice in his UFC career, uh, both of them by Paul Craig in rounds one and round two, but when we saw him get taken down, we saw him pretty much get right back to his feet. He doesn't really settle too often. He, you know, starts working to get back to the cage, uh, get his back up against the cage and work back to the back to his feet. But not only that, but he does a good, uh, really good job of like reversing position. And I believe one of those times that he reverses the position, he he pretty much lands a takedown from his knees. It was absolutely beautiful uh, the work that he did there. And then obviously the last second uh, submission victory for Paul Craig in that fight. That was his UFC debut. The only slip up, literally the only time he he just relaxed a little bit, uh, it got taken advantage of. And other than that, he, you know, he'd have pretty much a perfect career. We're talking about a guy that was one second away from being 15 and 0. Uh, so, you know, unfortunate uh, loss for him there. Dominated that fight pretty much from bell to bell until... Uh, Paul Craig was able to uh, snatch up that submission victory. After that, comes back and absolutely takes that aggression out on Marcin Pracnio, knock, knocking him out. Then puts together a very good performance against Klitsune Breu, where we saw him, you know, uses grappling, uses clinch work, uses striking to really get the game of Klitsune Breu to be off. And he takes home a decision victory there. The Dolce Lungiambula fight, right? Gets uh, rocked a little bit early in that first round, but makes adjustments almost immediately and then just controls the entirety of that fight. 
and then we obviously know the whole Iwan Kutilaba saga, right? The, uh, the first fight, just absolute blown call by the ref there. And then in the second fight, just no questions about it. You know what I mean? Magomed Ankalaev, absolutely the better fighter, the more technical striker. And he made it show, and he made it show with style points as well, too. Now, the impressive thing about Ankalaev's approach in his striking game is that he looks so comfortable in both stances that it just doesn't matter what his opponent's bringing to him in terms of the stance, right? When he's fighting a southpaw, he goes orthodox. Or sorry, he, yeah, he goes orthodox. Pretty much mirrors, uh, what, what am I talking about? Uh, it's always the opposite stance that he's going up against. So like, uh, if his opponent wants to come orthodox at him, he's going to come southpaw. If his opponent wants to go ortho or southpaw on him, he'll go orthodox. And he'll stick with it pretty much the entire fight. Or if his opponent wants to st switch up the stance, he'll switch it back up so it's always an opposite stance. And he's so comfortable in both spots. Like his left is just as strong as his right. And his hooks, his uppercuts, everything from both stances are just on point. I don't, I don't think that I can remember any fighter that that does it as comfortably as he does. Because I'm like watching the tape and I'm just like, okay, is he orthodox or is he southpaw? And then you see like from the, the Abreu fight, Abreu is a southpaw, so you see him fight orthodox pretty much the entire fight. And then you see uh, the you know the other fights and he's fighting in, the, in his other stance. It's just so weird, but he does it so effectively. He's very disciplined. He has a 68% uh, striking defense rate because he's very uh, efficient with his strikes. He's very defensively sound. And they that may hurt him in the output uh, a way of things here, right? Like he, he's not really landing the most amount of strikes when he's going 15 minutes. But he's definitely landing the more damaging shots. He's waiting for his opponent to, to give him a little bit so that he can take a whole mile. And that's what he does against his opponents. Guys like Nikita Krilov who leave all these openings and might be a little bit too reckless on the feet. Ankalaev is going to pick a guy like that apart. It makes absolute sense why Ankalaev is currently minus 325. Probably going to come up to minus 500 by the time this fight goes off. Now, the only way I think that Krilov truly wins this fight is if one this if this fight does go 15 minutes, if he's the more active guy. But not only does he have to be the more active guy, he has to make sure he's not getting hit, rocked, dropped, or getting his head popped back so many times that the judges actually end up giving it to Ankalaev. Does he finish Ankalaev? Maybe he pulls on, uh, throws up a submission of some sort? I don't know. I don't I don't really see that either. Does he knock Ankalaev out? From what we've seen thus far, Uncle Ives eaten some pretty big shots from Kutalaba, from Dalcha Lungiambula, from Marcin Prakniao. Does Krilov have that type of knockout power? I'm not 100% sure. I believe that Uncle Ives will be able to walk through him, and I completely understand why he's such a big favorite here. The guy is just so skilled, uh, has a solid wrestling background, master of Sambo, I believe as well, some Greco-Roman wrestling in his, in his past as well too. The guy is just so well-rounded. And he trains with a great team. If you look back at his Instagram four weeks ago, he's uh, he, he's already in Vegas, you know, getting some rounds in with Francis and Ganu for some reason. But then you also see his other training pictures where he's with Javier Mendes from AKA. He's around the Umar Nurmagomedovs, and he's around uh, some of these other guys that are that are with that camp, with the AKA especially. So I believe that he's getting the best training possible. He has a solid team behind him. He's Dagestani as well too, uh, which is always uh, an incentive. Uh, but I truly think that this guy is a 205-pound champion. And I think he's going to be able to run through uh, Nikita Krilov here, who again, you know, solid chaotic fighter, showed great grappling in his fight against Johnny Walker. Is he going to be able to do that type of work to Ankalaev? I just don't think so. I'd be very surprised if he... Like, he might be able to land some takedowns on Uncle Iev, but I'd be very surprised if he truly controls him there enough to at least win rounds. I, I don't see that happening. Is his chaotic volume style going to cause problems for Uncle Iev? I think it just plays into Uncle Iev's game, if anything, right? I think we'll see Uncle Iev, you know, pick him apart from uh, from, from range. Uh, even when he uh, uh, blitzes forward, his strikes are so proper like his combinations are nice his uppercut is nice his lead hook is always good no matter what stance he's coming from so i think that truly plays into him like baffling his opponents because he's so comfortable from either range so whether nikita wants to approach this with the south bar orthodox uh approach uncle i was just gonna you know counter with the exact opposite and he'll be fine so 
unless Magomed's chin just magically disappears or if uh, Krilov finds the neck and Ankalaev just really doesn't have any submission defense, uh, I, I don't see how Krilov wins this fight. Um, again, volume-based is a possibility, but I feel like if he's going to be volume-based, Ankalaev is going to find those openings for the counters and it's really going to cause damage to, to Krilov and I wouldn't be surprised if he knocks him out either. So I, I, I'm not sure which way I'm leaning with this fight. I feel like... I don't know if Krilov will be able to hang with him for 15 minutes, so maybe I'll go with Ankalaev second or third round KO. But I did see his decision proper on plus 315, which not too bad given this new style of Krilov that we've been seeing as of late. But again, it's been very grapple heavy, and I'm not sure if he's going to be as successful as he was against his last two opponents in the grappling realm, especially with keeping it in that realm. I think Uncle Ivo will, will be able to uh, kind of nullify that. Or if anything, maybe just do some good work from on top. So I, I'm split between the KO or decision here. I'll go with second or third round KO, but I might have to make a little bit of a sprinkle on that decision prop as well to a plus 300. I think that's a that's a solid spot. Another good spot in my opinion here is the over one and a half, which I currently saw around like minus 125, minus 130. I think that's a good spot too, as I do think that this will be a little bit slower paced than the Kutilaba fight. And given how Nikita has been fighting as of late, I could see it definitely going over seven and a half minutes. But the pick's going to be Uncle Ive, and I'll go with Uncle Ive to win this fight by let's say third round KO